Hello everyone, this is Arrow, and welcome back to Sundown Muna Podfix. Today we'll be continuing Learning to Adapt to the Fall by Sup Up Dog. Chapter 15, We Finally Get Fluff. It was warm, really warm. It felt nice after being hurt by his mother and shoved into that room. Did he do something good for them to keep him warm like this? Usually after he gets taken out of that room, Mizuku isn't allowed any blankets, so he knows that he was still bad and didn't forget it. The house always felt colder after he got out of the room. Izuku moved around a bit and felt feathers? Feathers? He shot up and tumbled onto the floor with a loud squawk. More sounds and voices filled his ears as Izuku looked intently at the wings that were on his back. He still had his feathers. He moved his wings around a little and they hurt, ache even, but they were still c- covered in feathers some bald spots but mostly intact he looked at where his flight feathers would be but they were gone izuku sits there staring trying to remember if those feathers grow back they do after a molt and he still has most of his downy and well a mix so they should be back a trill calls to his attention and his head snaps up to see who it was his eyes were assaulted by bright red until they finally adjusted, and it's Mama! Izuku bolted forward and snuggled himself into his sire's chest. His Mama was here. His Mama came for him and took him away from that room. He could feel his eyes getting more irritated by the tears that were forming, but he didn't want his vision to be blurry. Izuku wants to be able to see his Mama. Aw, my little Aes. His Mama wiped away the tears that were falling down his face, but he didn't care. Why are you crying so much? Did you forget we picked you up? Izuku couldn't answer with his voice. He didn't trust it besides making little sad cheeps here and there, so he just nodded his head as he pushed himself closer. Taking in large amounts of air so he could smell his mama better, the scent was so strong and it helped calm him down faster. The whole time he felt someone combing through his hair and then his wings. He tilted his head up so he could look into his mama's face. Are you a little more calm now, fledgling? A light, somewhat purring sound started to be made somewhere, but he didn't want, but that didn't matter. Oh, he's purring, just like you, Hawks. A bright and happy sounding voice that was not his mama was heard to his left. Izuku whipped his head into the direction and was met by yellow hair and greenish yellow eyes. Or present mic. A trill sounded from his throat as more fat tears rolled down his face. He reached out to the older blonde, a sad but happy smile formed on his face, and he held his hand. It's okay, Izuku, but we're sorry we didn't get to you sooner. Izuku shook his head as he tried to lean over to one of his senseis. The man's eyes were tearing up, and his smile grew more sad. We should have noticed sooner, Izuku. We're so so- No, no. Izuku shook his head more as he used what little strength he had so he could pull Yamada-sensei closer. You didn't know. A wet spot was starting to form on both his shoulders as they all cried together. One was from the man that was so scared of losing his newly formed chick that it would have hurted more than watching them grow from afar. The older blonde was crying because he was a UA teacher for fuck's sake. They were taught to see these types of things, but they didn't see it. Izuku should have gotten out faster, and others in his life should have gotten him out sooner than just now. The youngest of their three was crying for many reasons. Thoughts of thinking it's his fault that both of his flock members were weeping right now, the yelling in his mind trying to be noticed about how a monster didn't deserve this kindness, especially with another monster of its own kind. The begging to not be left behind again, to not have another supposed parent hurt him like his old one did. So much was screaming at him, saying that this was wrong, but oh so right at the same time. It made him feel like a migraine was forming. They all cried there for so long, or, well, it felt like a long time. It could have just been a couple of minutes. Pulling apart the two pro heroes that Izuku looks up to with fiery passion, with tear-filled streaks on his tear-filled streaks on his cheeks and dopey smiles plain as day on their face. It made him start to giggle at the ridiculousness of his life that it comes so fast to. It just didn't make sense. 
Soon Yamada Sensei was laughing and then Mama was laughing too. The room is filled by the snorting laugh of Yamada and the two twin bird-like laughs of the winged individuals in the room. Once they all calmed down, Izuku was able to see that his mama actually made a nest this time around. He looked at all the stuff that made it up and noticed some clothes in its making, but it was mostly blankets. Blankets that looked like hospital blankets. He also noticed that they were on the floor and not on a bed, which would usually be better to house two people unless Yamada Sensei was also in their nest. It would make sense to keep the flock nearby while sleeping. The smell of citrus and leather leather, plus a little bit of cats could be smelled. Another of fresh air and something that smelled slightly flowery, and there was a third smell in it too. It was one that was deep with coffee and cats, kinda like the first smell he noticed that wasn't his mama's, but who was it? But whose was it? Izuku could obviously tell that the first citrus type smell belonged to Yamada Sensei, and that was a good choice, a good flock member to have a scent for. He felt a light tug from his mama, but he was too busy staring intently at the pitch black shirts and the few neon colored pants. As carefully as he could, Izuku pulled out one of the shirts and smelt that smelled like coffee and sniffed it some more. It was familiar, but he couldn't tell from where. The hospital's sterile and clean smell didn't help with him trying his best to understand who this belonged to. Izuku glared at the, sh at the shirt as he heard some snicker from both the blondes by him. We should probably get him some food soon, Nestle, his mama told him as he kept looking at the offending shirt. A hand ran through his hair while some weight was while some weight that was weighing down on the nest moved away from him. Izuku's head snapped up to look at Yamada Sensei, who was moving closer to a bed. When did they get there? When did that get there? Finally he seemed to notice that someone was actually in the bed and also realized whose scent this was. More tears started to blur his vision as, she, as he shot up and ran over to the man that risked his life for them, the one that he remembered last seeing as a bloody mess on the cracked concrete ground. It was the first person that actually got his trust out of everyone in this room. Izuku looked into Onyx's eyes as he cried and threw himself, as much as he could, onto Aizawa's chest. Z Z Zawa, I, I thought that you, you, you were... He tried his best to talk through his heavy crying, but it was probably a little hard to understand. The smell of coffee and cats filled his nose as the man that almost died for them kept his hand in his hair. While it was cast at hand, but it was there and that's all Izuku cared about. He could feel the other two that were in his flock starting to fix his feathers, the small bald, spot, bald spots feeling cold with them being downy feathers. They aren't meant to keep his new wings warm while they can't fly or fend for themselves yet. P -p Problem is, I'm fine. He lifted his head up to look at the thick bandages covering Aizawa's neck. He could have helped more. Little listener, Sho will be able to talk again. He might have to go to speech therapy, but he'll be all monotone once again soon. Izuku could see Aizawa glaring at Yamada, Yamada while out of the corner of his eye. Mama was still fixing his wings and smiling the whole time. He could have still done more. He was right there. Izuku leaned more into the preening that his mama was doing as he started to get more and more hungry. Aizawa must have noticed because he tried to push the call button but failed because of the cast. Yamada chuckled as he pressed it for him. They will most likely bring food without us telling them to. We did tell them that the next time we called them it was going to be for food. The hunger was slowly starting to hurt a little, but that wasn't what was most on Izuku's mind. His eyes didn't get off of Aizawa as he watched the up and down movement of his chest. He needed to see that Aizawa was still alive and not dead. Breathing and moving and thinking, not bloody and still and still and dying. Not dying. Aizawa wasn't dying. And Izuku made sure of that. A light hiss brought him out of his thoughts. It was a hiss from his mama. Red suddenly obstructed his vision, and it all got a little more comfortable as well. Nice and fluffy and safe in Mama's wings. Hawks, calm down, Yamada said smoothly. They didn't knock, his mama answered in a hissing voice. I know, I know, but they need to give us food for the fledgling, right? 
Yamada's voice sounded closer now. It was quiet for a bit, no hissing, just still. Fine, Papa. Fine, Papa. Papa? It's okay, my little feather. Mama's wings puffed up more, but Izuku couldn't tell why. Aw, you're getting red. Do you like the nickname I thought up for you? Yamuna's voice sounded teasing, light and warm. Safe. J just get hatchling his food, Papa. Oh, was Yamada his mama's papa? Shuffling was heard from around the feathers, but Izuku paid no mind to that. If Yamada was mama's papa, and it seemed that Yamada and Z Aizawa were mates, mama has a papa, and that's Yamada-sensei. Hawks, little feather, can you move your wings out of the way now? They left, they left, and he needs to eat now. Mama's wings filtered and flittered in place for a bit until they finally, slowly, moved out of the way. With Izuku's vision no longer obstructed, he could see Yamada clearly now. He was sitting in front of him with mouth-watering looking food. It was raw, whole fish again. He launched into Yamada's arms. What should what should he call him? Because he has to be Gigi. He quickly snatched the raw fish from his hands, and Izuku sat down in between both Mama and Gigi. He was quiet for a little it was quiet for a little bit, but then really loud but startled laughter filled the room. Izuku didn't really care because he had his fish, Mama, Gigi, and Pappy in the same room as him. Izuku was finally safe. Hizashi didn't know what to say when the little listener just called him Gigi. He called him Grandpa. Sho started to laugh like a dying hyena, and, and Hawks just sat there looking rather happy with Izuku's name for him. He was also eating some bird of prey food too, so that could also factor into the happy content look on his face. With his face burning, he glared over to his husband. Oh, shut it. I'm Papa the Hawks, okay? It would make sense that the little listener would then equ equate that to me being his grandpa. He shouted at the bedridden man that he unfortunately married. Sho continued to laugh if he was, as he was sulking at being a grandparent at such a young age. I'm too young to be a Gigi yet. Hawk seemed to finish with one piece of food and looked over to Shota that was slowly dying of laughter by now, s slowing down his laughter by now. Hizashi saw him narrow his eyes as he picked up another piece of food. I wouldn't be laughing too hard, Dad. Nestling probably already has a name for you, too. Then Hawks proceeded to go back to stuffing his face with raw chicken, bone and all. This got Hizashi laughing back, back at him while Shota sputtered in his bed. That's what he gets, forgetting that Hawks label both of them flock, flock, label both of them flock means that he's got a title too. Dad is the perfect title for him. I'm going to call him Pappy. His head whipped around to see the little listener pick up some more food, but was looking at Shota. That got him to laugh louder and point at Sho with saying Pappy. Both of the birds of prey seemed very happy to see two humans. Both birds of prey seemed very happy, and the two humans seemed embarrassed, but happy all the same. Wait till I tell them about Pappy. <laughs> I, I, I'll t tell her about Gigi Ashi. Yeah, everyone is happy and content. Hizashi thought as he tried to get up to grab his phone, but was pulled back down into the nest by both of the birds of prey. More laughing was sounded off after that. Here are some end notes memes. Izuku waking up. Oh fuck, I'm warm. That's not right. Hux. Baby needs warmth because he lost feathers. Izu. Oh fuck, it's mama! Hux. I protect the baby bird. Zashi. I help with that. Hux. Le gasp. Papa helps me? Izu. Papa? Izuku looking at shirts and nest. What are you? Ox and Zashi just watching the baby bird investigate. Zawa, I am here. Izu, oh my god, you live! Zawa, oh god, why does everyone jump onto me? Izu eating after straight up calling Zashi a 30-year-old man. Gigi, mmm, yummy.
Rahul fish. Zashi. I am not that old. Zawa just fucking dying. Hawk's enjoying his food. Dad, don't laugh because you are also a grandpa now. Zaw Zashi and Zawa now switching actions. Izu. Yeah, he's pappy. Nem in her house calming down from the flashback. Why do I feel like I'm missing blackmail material? 10. I don't know why. Nem. I'm going to try and visit soon. Ten getting more confused. Visit who? Nezu. I have so much shit to deal with. Ew, 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 ew. Gross. Namamosa. You can go back to your pack soon. Nezu. I will work my best to see my pack. All right, everyone. That is the end of chapter 15 of Learning to Adapt to the Fall. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.